thank you for uh, coming to uh, innovation, Voices of Innovation in the Innovation Agora. Uh, big focus on technology. And this is going to be a very interesting session because I have a very special guest, uh, His Excellency, uh, Mr. Mazuri, who is the uh, Minister of Energy uh, and Industry for the UAE. And actually, I want to start uh, because we are both fellow petroleum engineers. So did you work as a petroleum engineer? Of course. You did. And, and what did you do? Say a little bit about that. Well, I worked uh, at the beginning. I worked as a reservoir engineer. Then I moved to the modeling. I was a modeler using Eclipse at that time. Uh, so, and then I moved to uh, production operations. So kind of have seen the both worlds. So I have to be careful not to talk too much about the, because you can catch me on that. No, so. <laughs> it's been a long time. <laughs> I know, same here. Um, let's talk about what is going on uh, in the world of technology. You, if you remember in 2014, you know, price of oil uh, went down very significantly. And I think the thinking in the industry was, uh, particularly here, but I think around the world, that uh, technology is going to rescue bring the cost down and, and all that. So give us your perspective on how you think technology is done globally, but also within UAE. I think it did when, when uh, of course, it was not the first time that oil prices goes down. Yeah. Uh, we have cycles always. But I think what was interesting is that the, uh, here in the United States, where the shale production was booming, and you had that uh, crash on prices, mm -hmm. I think the question was, would the technology help so much so that production can be uh, restored again? And uh, I think it did. And the whole industry benefited from the, that difficult time. I think the average, if you look at the average uh, reduction in, in, in cost, uh, was between 40% in, in the deep water up to, if you take an average, at least 35% reduction. Mm -hmm. That did not only help the shale oil pr uh, producers, it helped the uh, deep water uh, producers, it helped us even in the Middle East, uh, where we managed as well to, uh, to, to reduce the, uh, the cost uh, significantly. And I think, I think that uh, the role of data and the use of data and how we use data have changed uh, dramatically. Uh, nowadays, we're talking to uh, data companies uh, in, instead of talking to a drilling company and, and, uh, or, or a completion uh, company. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's, uh, it's enormous uh, how much uh, we can do utilizing that data and minimizing the human error. We use as engineers, we use to make judgments. And sometimes we, uh, we miss a few meters and you miss, you miss a reservoir or miss a target. That's I right. think nowadays, with the, uh, with the use of uh, technology and the, uh, the utilization of artificial intelligence to uh, manage that data, I think the, uh, the future is going to be uh, even more prosperous uh, for, for us as producers. So U UAE and the Middle East more broadly, your production costs are already quite low. Uh, are they getting lower and, and you're improving you know, things like recovery? Say a little bit more about how you are applying technology in your own operations? Well, first of all, we try to link the, the different segments of the, of the business, mm -hmm. utilizing data. And uh, in, uh, in ADNOC, under the leadership of His Excellency uh, Dr. Sultan al-Jabr, they managed to, to do so with the help of, the, of so many companies. So uh, nowadays, you don't have any silos anymore. Yeah. You have the driller, talking to the, uh, the production engineer, uh, and they are all in one, uh, one data, uh, data room. And that was not the case when you and I were engineers. As you remember, we've been... Yeah, uh, geologists were kind of second class, you know. And the <laughs> they do their job, they give us the data, and then they move. Yes. And, but it's, it's, not, it's not that anymore. I think, I think ADNUC have managed to interlink the difference, the, the different uh, aspects of the game, not only drilling and completion, but terminals. Uh, when do you release that barrel? Is the market ready for it? Yeah. And uh, timing is is uh, is important, but also 
uh, reduction of, uh, of human errors, uh, improving efficiency, and uh, staying, uh, making the industry more uh, resilient to uh, moving in oil prices. We want to be profitable no matter what happened to the oil price. And I think that uh, that can be done with the, with the utilization of, of technology. Again, in, in Abu Dhabi, we have a conventional and a low cost, uh, uh, I mean, oil. It doesn't matter where you are. Uh, do you, uh, how do you see the future? In, in, in UAE, you are applying a lot of latest technology. You see a lot of opportunity further into the future as the technology is also developing? Yes, we do. And, and we, are we are also not only looking at the oil and gas, but we are interlinking the oil and gas into the energy, the bigger yes. mm -hmm. spectrum of energy. UAE is venturing to, uh, to become 50% uh, green or zero emissions, uh, using zero emission sources of energy. So gas need to complement, uh, to be complemented by other forms of energy, solar and others. So how do we ensure that gas uh, is enough to, to be sustain, sustaining that growth in, in demand? UAE today, if you look, talk about the electricity sector, is around 30 uh, giga, uh, gigawatt. We will go to 100 gigawatt by 2050. So how much gas do we need? Mm -hmm. And are we ready for it? Are we going to use a uh, unconventional gas? And what is the cost of it? And uh, so one of the things that we did with ADNOC is fixing the market. So fixing the demand. Fixing the demand by removing subsidy. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think with the use of technology, we managed to reduce the gas consumption by 30%, just utilizing the, the best in class CCGT. Uh, uh, power generation. Power generation. Mm -hmm. And uh, when we do that, then we can afford to pay the full price of gas. And if we, have, if we make the market uh, ready for uh, for the full paying the full price that will open up uh, opportunities in the unconventional not to mention the the conventional gas so, so right now the 30 gigawatts is there is some coal as well isn't it in your mix and and uh, oil and what's your mix today it's very interesting when it comes to coal people are saying why are you you're talking about clean energy but you're you're you're, you're also considering coal even with up to 12 percent coal mm -hmm. in the energy mix that we will have we will be cutting CO2 emission by 70% by 2050. So uh, when we did the, uh, the analysis, ADNOC did not have, uh, we did not, uh, we were not uh, talking to ADNOC about a, uh, an unsubsidized gas price. Now we are there and we, I, I think looking at the prices today and we are revising the strategy every five years I think, uh, and I'm expecting that uh, gas will, will be cheaper than clean coal uh, at the prices that we have because it's less than the LNG price, mm -hmm. but it's, uh, it's definitely much higher than the Henry Hub uh, gas price here in the US. So it's a fair price and we managed to, uh, to work with the whole system to encourage that commercially viable price for uh, for all stakeholders. But you, you're thinking in this long, you know, 2050 vision that uh, you have domestic gas coming through unconventional yes. resource base. That's kind of your thinking. Com uh, we have UAE or uh, ADNOC ha is managing a res uh, uh, resources of up to 200, 213 uh, TCF of gas. So the gas is there. The, the question was the price, price. of Producing that gas, if you are to sell it for a dollar, two dollars, three dollars, it's not going to cut it. So you need to fix the the, uh, the market for that for that gas in order for you to deploy the right technologies and produce it. And I think that's what we did. Uh, ahead of uh, all of our neighbors, we managed to get a gas price that is fair uh, for the developers, because we want also the investors to come and invest. We don't want to invest on that gas alone. Adnuk used to deal with the gas as a sole risk, but that is not the case today. Today we have, comp we have uh, investors that are investing in, in the development of gas. We even have um, a partnership with Occidental developing in Al-Husan, developing, uh, uh, developing a sour gas, 
so even sour gas would work at that price. And I think that's what, uh, what we have uh, achieved recently, which will change again the, the landscape. So we're talking about, let's say, fossil 50% and non-fossil green, zero emission 50%. That's the strategy for 2050. Yeah, yeah. So um, I'll come. Uh, let's actually talk about now about non-fossil. Uh, you have been actually in a way the pioneer with Master mm -hmm. as the Master City. You know, as the back I think in 2006 you started it. So how is that coming along, and uh, where do you think it will go? Is it primarily solar? You're thinking, or it's primarily solar, mm -hmm. but Master uh, is also not only working in UAE. We are we are Cross, interested yeah. in the, in the whole region. Yeah. I think what was interesting at the Sustainability Week this this uh, this year mm -hmm. is the announcement of that uh, project in Saudi Arabia, the wind project, of around two cent per kilowatt hour. That's probably the, the cheapest uh, wind uh, price ever, and it's interesting that Master have won that bid. Uh, so Master is not only solar but also looking at the wind and who knows the technology is improving as well and uh, the wind speed uh, is is something that they are they are uh, uh, always looking at and developing so who knows maybe uh, we would be positively surprised that even at a lower wind speed uh, those uh, uh, wind turbines could uh, could work and, and generate a reasonably priced uh, electricity if if you grow the solar installation within the country to fi you know, 50% is a big number. Uh, how do you see the in solar industry? Do you think there might be solar manufacturing within the within the UAE? Or? We looked at manufacturing. The problem with manufacturing, you need a massive scale even if you have. Uh, so let me tell you first, where are we going? Yeah. Today we are around 30 gigawatt. Yeah. We will be 100 gigawatt by 2050. And out of that, 44% is going to, is going to be solar. Wow. Okay. So that's what that's of the prices that we know today. If solar goes cheaper, then maybe it will advance more. Uh, so there is a healthy competition among those uh, and we're not subsidizing any form of energy. So it's interesting to see every 5 years when we revise that strategy which form of energy is advancing more than the other. Uh, but we decided to be ready for uh, to to for, for Adnoc to be ready to sub, to fully supply the whole country with gas to become self-sufficient by 2030, and that's a target that is impossible to achieve if you are not uh, liberating or or, or uh, removing all of the subsidies that mm -hmm. they used to give to the to the other forms of energy. So it um, uh, it's working, and we believe that there is a massive. Uh, amount, of, uh, I mean, number of projects uh, coming to to us to the um, to to UAE in term of uh, solar, 44 gigawatt of which we only have around three uh, gigawatt uh, uh, under construction today. So we are just seeing the tip of the iceberg. And uh, so, if you are a solar developer, time to be in UAE. Yes. Uh, uh, Two other things related to sort of energy, and we'll move to other topics. One is um, sort of uh, energy efficiency. Uh, how does that pic fit into this picture you are painting for the for the future? Oh, it's one of the pillars. Without energy efficiency and thriving to achieve the highest uh, energy efficiency, we will not be able, first of all, to uh, to afford the gas price that we we were talking about. So I'll give you just a number. If you look at the average. Uh, fleets in the uh, in the GCC, it's in the range of 30 to 35 percent efficiency. This is the power. Uh, power These are the power power station. Yeah. The the the, 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 uh, mm -hmm. uh, the the gas the gas turbines. And if you look at the latest today, we have 64 percent or 65 percent. So you're talking about almost th double. Almost double, yeah. and you're talking about at least 30 to 35 percent reduction in the gas you need to produce the same electricity. Yeah. This is unfortunately the case all over the world. People are uh, are not thinking economically when they are keeping those old uh, old turbines. And I think now with the new technologies, um, the people are seeing are seeing the uh, the benefits of the of those new CCGT, and there is uh, a, a shift toward uh, replacing the old the old uh, the older machines with the new ones. Uh, we think in UAE, 
uh, we can cut the demand by 30% if we just change those. And that's one of the areas uh, that we are uh, progressing very well in, in our strategy uh, to achieve it. And that would, uh, would save us 30%. What does that mean in terms of protecting the environment as well? So you are, pr you are reducing uh, the, the emissions by 30% yes. because you are burning less gas. So we think, we think it, serve, it serves us in, in, in both ways, cutting the emissions, but cutting cost as well. Yeah. One area we haven't touched is uh, down, you know, uh, oil. Uh, and how are you doing uh, you know, market reforms in oil in terms of price subsidy? Are you also trying to eliminate that? And uh, we did that in 2015. Mm. 2015. Uh, Completely eliminated. Completely. Mm. Uh, now everyone who sells gasoline and diesel makes money in UAE. So there is zero subsidy. There is actually profit. Uh, and we did that formula with, uh, as, as a regulator, as a government, together with the uh, distribution companies. And uh, we, uh, we provided a profit margin for them. And the moving elements on the pricing is the price in uh, Mediterranean, for example, or Singapore. So we take those benchmarks that are moving daily, and then we add them together uh, for a whole month, and then we divide them by the days. And then we add the fixed elements, which are the transportation and the logistics of that distribution, the, uh, distribution yeah. logistics. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's, it's a fair um, a formula and a fair system, and it has been working. So do you see a change in demand as the price goes up or down? Yes. Or you, you do see it? Yes, I think, I think uh, the demand went down. People are now, uh, are now more wise. When the prices goes up, you see them drive less. When the prices when the, when it's cheap, they keep they, they they go to the norm, but I think I think there is there is that realization. Also, there is from the uh, from the um, uh, the uh, car uh, the, the the cars uh, uh, manufacturing. They are also now considering the efficiency, putting stars. So people are wise when they go and buy their their cars. Is it is it a four star or three star? Uh, how many gallons per? Uh, uh, per kilometer or mile, so that's that's something was not there before. I mean, before the uh, liberalization, because it, it was the same price. So why would you care? So yeah, there is a people think well, it's going to be more expensive to yes. keep that car. Yeah. And you start to see also uh, some other uh, form of cars like EVs. You start to see EVs uh, increasing in UAE. You start to see as well uh, diesel diesel cars. Uh, so. There is, there, is a, there is a realization that the price matters. So uh, I was going to come to EV, so that's a very good segue. Uh, how do you see, you know, I actually there's a lot of enthusiasm, I'm sure you know about that, around the world from EVs, but the reality is there are only 5 million electric, uh, you know, light duty vehicles in a, in a billion uh, LDV market. So how do you see globally and then within, within the UAE the growth of EVs? I think globally it will take its time. It's, it's definitely a, a viable option today. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's cleaner and uh, in certain cities for a mass transportation, for taxi drivers, I think, I think it's, uh, it's coming in, in, in a massive uh, scale. I think in, uh, in a polluted cities, they are needed uh, rather quicker than, uh, than the, uh, the countryside. Yeah. Uh, China is doing, uh, I think, the highest progression in terms of, uh, of in the introduction of EVs. But we need to be real realistic. We're talking about, what, a 1.3 billion cars in the world. And the, the, uh, the whole production today is, not, uh, is, is, is very, very small, probably 0.01% or yeah. so. Mm -hmm. So it will take time. And I think it will be deployed more in Europe uh, in 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 uh, California, for example, but you'll see less in Texas than in California, and that is that is natural. Uh, in in the Middle East, you will see you will see them coming, but not to replace. I think it will complement the uh, the, uh, the engine, the gas, the, the, the gasoline engines, uh, and even the gasoline engines now and the and the car manufacturers, they are also thinking of improving the engines. It was they were k kind of relaxed before, and now they are trying to improve the hybrid and, and trying to find more solutions. We see hydrogen cars as well. I don't know uh, how how many uh, are there here in the U.S., but but we see we see them uh, in in Europe 
and we, we are now doing one, uh, one hydrogen uh, uh, plant in, uh, in Dubai, small scale, but uh, it's there. So you are, I mean, in terms of, since you are a big oil producer, does it worry you the EVs coming or? No, I don't think, I don't think it worries us from OPEC, uh, neither it worries us uh, in the UAE. We're trying to provide choices for the customers. They can drive, they, they elect to drive a, uh, a gasoline or diesel or uh, hybrid or, or, or EV, it's available. Actually, the government is providing also uh, charging uh, stations. Now you see them in the shopping malls, mm -hmm. uh, you see them in, uh, in the highways. So uh, it's, it, it, it's coming, but it's coming naturally. We're not pushing it uh -huh. as, as uh, we're not subsidizing it. That's right. Uh, one other thing I want to touch on, uh, we'll open it up for questions in a minute, is uh, carbon capture. Last year when you were here, we did a panel uh, with you on carbon capture. You had just started. Yeah. your project how is that going and what's the for longer term plan now it's going very well uh, and now adnoc uh, is uh, considering uh, more uh, i mean to increase the number of those of those projects as you know uh, we are utilizing the co2 we're not just disposing it that's right and uh, the miscibility of that gas has been we've been monitoring it so so it has been successful uh, and i think that will drive more projects to come uh, there are at least two to three projects on the plan, and uh, ADNOC is taking the lead on, uh, on those projects. Um, and we believe that with the, uh, uh, with the, right, with the right incentives uh, in the future, uh, carbon capture can be, uh, can be a solution to, uh, to, reduce it, to reducing the uh, CO2 emission. These new projects are they? The, what is the source of CO two? Is it power plant? Because this one is a steel plant. The it's first a steel plant. Uh -huh. uh, they are mixed. One of them uh, that's it's coming later is 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 a power plant. Uh, other are industrial, and also uh, we are trying to uh, to look at the plants that we have within the adno groups, instead of I see uh, of of. Uh, so we're trying to to have uh, the uh, decarbonization within adno rather than just trying to to solve the, uh, the problems for others. And I think uh, gradually we're going to the power plants. Uh, but as a target for the whole country, we are targeting to reduce emission, CO2 emission by 70% by 2050. ADNOC, uh, and the, the uh, methane, uh, one of the issues, the, the methane intensity in, in ADNOC is one of the lowest. Coming uh, down. Mm -hmm. It's 0.01%, so very few NOCs or uh, even IOCs have uh, such low number in methane. And that was driven because we started early back in 1995, uh, the uh, zero flaring initiative. So we started before the industry. Yeah. Uh, yesterday, Fatih Birol was here sitting in the same seat and, and he made a very big push for uh, carbon capture. Uh, he said that carbon capture is critical for meeting any kind of uh, climate goals globally. It wasn't specific to a country. I mean, what do you think? Is uh, would you agree with Fatih on that front? I think uh, CCS and CCU are important. We need to uh, to to increase the number of those projects. But also, I mean, we need also to be to be uh, to to put the priorities right. Now, I don't think it's acceptable to have coal power plants. In, uh, in countries like the US. You have plenty of gas. I think we need to see those, those plants closed as soon as possible, replaced by, by uh, uh, the uh, latest uh, CCGT. High uh, efficiency. High efficiency. You will reduce the, uh, the, the emission faster than uh, capturing a CCSU or, or, or CCU. And, uh, but they go parallel. But it's not acceptable that you leave those plants polluting the environment, and then you try to capture CO2. Uh, also, they, um, uh, trying to capture CO2 from those plants would be a priority rather than doing it in, because those are the major uh, pollutant. According to the, uh, to the agency, uh, it's 70% of the, of the uh, emissions coming from those plants in the US if you look at the whole electricity sector. So, I think you need to focus, countries like the US, they need, they need to focus on, on, those, on those power plants. Uh, and I understand that there are issues related to, to, the, uh, 
to the uh, workers or unions. But uh, despite all of that, you need you need to address the highest the highest uh, pollutant uh, mm -hmm. rather than just talking about the CC uh, carbon capture and storage. Yeah. So last question for me before we open to the audience. Uh, we haven't talked about oil price and all that. I don't want to. But I do want to ask you, you were the president of OPEC uh, last year. Last year. Yeah. So uh, you can have your experience of that because uh, it must have been uh, fascinating, f you know, to be dealing with so many multiple different constituencies, different objectives, Russia on one hand, and then the rest of the world. Say a little bit about how did, what, how did you man navigate all that? What did you learn from it? Well, it has been, it has been a very interesting experience for me, first of all, and I learned a lot from it. Mm -hmm. I mean, when we started the year, the year before, the oil price was around fifty-four dollars, yeah. and we were going from a year before forty-three. So we were kind Coming of recovering, up. Yeah. Uh, and uh, we were in the verge of: Are we continuing this this deal? Because we knew uh, at the beginning of the year that we will we will probably see the market balance around the uh, the five years average during the year. So what is going to happen? And that was one of the questions. Is the uh, alliance going to be uh, dismantled uh -huh. or not? And uh, I put uh, two objectives for me and for the Secretary General. One is to keep the alliance for ever, yeah. for for long term, mm -hmm. which was not uh, the understanding even when we when we started. And we achieved that. We we had the the, uh, the charter signed by all of the ministers at the at the end of the year. So I think I think that was. Uh, a historical moment for all of us to agree to continue working together. Of course, it's not going to be an organization. It's going to be rather forum or, 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 or collaboration. Uh, the second objective was to, uh, to balance the market mm -hmm. as soon as possible. And I think we did uh, follow up with the uh, GMMC um, and we managed to, uh, to correct, totally correct the market. Uh, back to the five years average, removing around 340 million barrels, which was a surplus on the inventories. Uh, and we managed to, uh, to complete the job during that year. And uh, it hasn't, it's not been uh, an easy uh, year, as you know. We had uh, the sanction came during the year. Yes. We had to change the strategies during the summer. Uh, but uh, I think I was lucky uh, having a very good uh, uh, and capable uh, ministers at the JMMC, both uh, Minister al Faleh and Alexander Novak, uh, they helped me a lot to maneuver that year and deliver a good year to the industry. And uh, some people in the audience may not know it that the presidency is alphabetically, so now you have a, f a few years before you come back up. Uh, oh, 14 years. <laughs> I'm just, uh, I'm just uh, kidding you. So we will, we will open it up uh, for any questions from the audience. Please keep them brief um, and. Uh, We'll see how many questions we can, can get. So right here, uh, Dr. Sam. Yeah, thank you very much. Very interesting subject, especially uh, for me. Uh, uh, first time to know uh, both of you, uh, my familiar uh, the uh, friends, and they are from the uh, reservoir engineers. Especially for the uh, I think the minister is a uh, modelist. Uh, even do the modeling for simulation of the reservoirs. And as you know that uh, I used to work for CNPC uh, about 30 years. So I feel that uh, we have a common language. <laughs> and uh, also you talk about uh, the uh, CCUS and the CCS, uh, uh, and especially uh, for the uh, not uh, the uh, UAE uh, take the lead uh, for this, uh, the capture and the utilization for the EOR. Uh, I feel that is uh, really uh, encouraged and leading. And the, uh, uh, 10 years ago, I worked for the uh, company as the uh, president and CEO for the oil companies. At that time, I already considered use the uh, uh, the uh, CO2 to have the EOR, enhanced oil recovery. But my uh, manager and uh, engineers report to me, difficult. Uh, I asked them why. They said, if you use the CO2, and then you in inject the CO2, because nearby of our oil fields, we have a reservoir have about 20% of CO2. So I consider you that one injection in increased the enhancer uh, uh, production. But they said, if we use that one, only six, month, uh, six uh, months. And then for the casing, tubing, wellhead, and uh, the uh, BOP, all uh, the damaged. 
and be because of the corrosion reason. So that's the reason why if you want to use the CO2 for the EOR, and then you have to have special set of this from the wellhead to the dung, all this. Otherwise, this will damage. And also cost-wise, it's a, a, a lot of the, 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 the expensive. So that's the reason why many companies want to use, cannot use it. So by this one, after the report to me, I feel that is it. Now today I find out two specialists in front of me. So I ask this technical question, how you uh, at NAC solve this issue and improve this and prolong this uh, downhole equipment and make this more e economic. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Sam. I think it definitely it does not work in every reservoir. Yeah. Uh, and, and you need to, to, uh, to, uh, to look at uh, the uh, uh, characteristics of the reservoir and, uh, and select the right materials for it. But technology is, is evolving as well. So it wasn't, it wasn't something that we, we, uh, we thought it will work just like that. We did some uh, piloting at the beginning and after um, testing it in, in, uh, in the pilot, we decided to go and, and do the, uh, the project. It has been successful uh, and uh, we welcome uh, you to visit if you want and, and then we can then then we can we can have the engineers I've discuss discuss uh, more of the meteorology and what materials they use <laughs> and all of that uh, uh, one word in that case if i have a chance to visit your office uh, uh, your engineers i will use the chances for IEF to uh, elaborate let all the company know that how you do it and uh, make this a, a public uh, thank you very much okay we'll go uh direction there yeah please uh, thank you. Uh, I'd like to know if you could elaborate a little bit more on what technologies are you specifically using to produce oil and gas in, in the Emirates and what uh, strategies you are currently doing in order to foster innovation within ATNOC or your government? Well, uh, we have the conventional, of course. Uh, I mean, UAE has been producing since... Uh, since the uh, 1950 or 1960, the the, the first uh, the first shipment. So we've been we've been producing um, oil and gas uh, conventionally. Uh, we ventured into developing a sour uh, uh, a high sour reservoir for uh, for gas, and now uh, we are with with high sulfur content. So that was one of the challenges and. Uh, Occidental is working with us on, on, on that challenging field. But uh, we use water uh, injection, we use gas injection uh, as a, a, an EOR uh, mechanism of, of production. Um, we have offshore, onshore. So uh, it's very difficult to, to say that we have a very specific technology. I think it's specific in, uh, in, the, sour, uh, in the sour gas. Mm -hmm. Uh, but we uh, we have one of the lowest, if not the lowest, uh, technical uh, cost uh, in the world, producing efficiently and uh, with uh, a high uh, high HSC uh, records. You, you have been quite a leader in EOR, from what I understand, yes. right? Because you started it uh, quite a while back. It's not something you have done last few years, is it? And the challenge for the IOCs is to achieve almost 70% recovery, ultimate recovery. So that is not easy. <laughs> you are a reservoir engineer, you understand it. We were, if you get 50, then you're lucky. <laughs> so the hurdle rate in UAE is high because we concern, we're concerned about the ultimate recovery uh, and the economics of it as well. Question Can here. you say something more about these hydrogen cars? You talked about hydrogen. Well, it's, it's one of the new technologies uh, that uh, Toyota is, is developing. And uh, since uh, in Europe there are lots of, in Germany especially, there are uh, many of unutilized uh, renewable uh, or solar, solar projects, they use that energy to produce liquid hydrogen and then they use it for transportation. Uh, so we are doing a small uh, scale uh, project uh, together with uh, Siemens in Dubai uh, to, uh, to test this, uh, this form of energy. But it's, it's a small scale at this, scale, at this, at this time.
So, so Your Excellency, maybe I asked the last question, yeah. which is not related to energy, but the fact, as I understand, uh, you will be hosting the Special Olympics yes. coming uh, this week, I think. Yes. Can you, I mean, this is quite interesting, first time in the, in the Middle East. Can you say as to how did it happen and what you plan to do? Well, it's, uh, it's, uh, we are uh, really honored to, uh, to host the Special Olympics. Uh, I think the leadership in UAE pays a special attention to uh, those we, we call them the, the determined. We don't call them... Uh, the you have a band with that, right? We have I a saw band that. with that. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, we are keen to, uh, to, to, to give them the courage uh, to uh, roll them into the, the society. We believe that they are, uh, they are not less than uh, any one of us. And uh, we, uh, we want to give them uh, the, uh, the opportunity and the support that they need to, uh, in the society. So it's not only the Olympics itself, but there are so many initiatives that we are doing, right. uh, especially for them. We've been educating parents how to deal with, uh, with, uh, with them and uh, not to be shy if they have a child or uh, who, who have any uh, special needs special right. needs yeah uh, the, they are uh, they need to be uh, to be given special care and uh, his highness uh, sheikh mohammed bin zayed uh, the crown prince of abu dhabi is uh, he is keen on uh, on giving them the support and he called them the heroes so uh, we are uh, very proud of hosting uh, uh, the, uh, the, special, the Special Olympics. And uh, we really discovered a lot of talent just uh, dealing with them. Yeah. Uh, Your Excellency, uh, thank you for being here. Thank you uh, okay. to do this uh, in your very busy schedule. We know we have put you out to more work uh, tomorrow as well. So uh, it's great to have you here. Please come back next year. You'll only be 13 years away from the OPEC presidency by that time. <laughs> uh, and uh, we'd love to have you. Please join me in thanking you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.